There we go. Oh, I um, see. Yeah, I'm going to shut down Discord. Joe, are you back with us? Nope, he's not here yet. Yeah. Yeah, did you, get, did you send the – I sent you an invitation to join this Zoom link. Are you in the Zoom with us? Get out – X out of X Discord and come back into through the Zoom. <laughs> this is fucking crazy. We've never had this problem before, Eric. You know, I know. <laughs> Technology, it's great when it works. That's right. <sighs> yeah. Go to your email, check your email and follow It's through the an email link. link there, Joe. So what happens, you, you keep going, your vid, you, video you, uh, keeps going on and off. Mine does? Not like constant but every now and then it'll go to a black screen with the little circle and like it looks like a, a person okay. a profile uh icon or something you're there right. now you know okay it hasn't done it in a minute now so let's just see yeah this is really fucked up you know thank uh, you yeah <laughs> well, it's, it's great to see you and talk with you i mean seriously um you know we're all fans i i I started listening to Trouble, I think eight, 1985 is when I first heard Trouble, and uh, I never heard anything like it. I wasn't, I was, uh, I was being, being raised in a very kind of fundamentalist church. Uh, we, you know, we weren't allowed to listen to secular music, so when I heard you guys, it was on a local college station that was being billed as like a, you know Christian metal. I'm like, oh my god, these guys are so good. Yeah. You know, I know, I know, I know it wasn't. <laughs> uh, that was my, but that was my introduction, and I just that I've been a fan. Me off, man. I, yeah. I I confronted Brian years later at a festival once. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Why would you do that? You know, and, it's not, it, and it doesn't have anything That's to cool. do with being Christian or not, but you can't tell people what it is because you have to let them figure it out for yourself, you know? Right, right. But once they said it was white metal and Christian, right away, half the fucking world wouldn't listen to it because of right. that reason. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. So, but he yeah. shot himself in the foot right off the bat, you know? Yeah, it's not like, not like you guys were Striper or something, you know? Fuck no. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't out trying to save anybody anyway. I was just out. Right. You know, back then with Venoms and Slayer, they, I said just as many Satans and Lucifers as they did. Yeah. You know, I just yeah. put a little positive. I grew up Catholic, so, and, and, and at that point, I wasn't Catholic anymore, but it's still, there was no way on earth I was going to the other side, like, you know, and or take that chance even, yeah. you know? So whatever, when I see people with all that Satan bullshit, you know, I've, I've met a lot of people over the years and toured and festival. There was only one person the whole time that actually was into that shit. And that was King Diamond. Yeah. You know, but now I think he, I heard he changed his tune after his heart attacks and shit, you know? Oh, okay. Oh, wow. That'd be interesting. So that was his consequence. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're, now, we're still waiting on joe to come in i'm hoping he comes back in now from what i understand i have like a 40 minute window so by 8 30 or so we may have to kind of do this one more time where i i go in open up a new zoom link and send you another email again again i don't know why this is we're having so much of a problem um i mark did you hear anything from joe was he able to like get his email or to know how to check into zoom yeah, uh, last he said he was closing Discord. So okay, and for some reason it doesn't want to. It doesn't want to play with my camera here with with Zoom. So uh, as long as can you still hear me, Eric? Am yeah, I at I least see, part of the I, conversation? Oh, okay. There's up. Okay, I can hear everybody. Okay. I said, well, I don't know. It sounds like there's only two of you right now. Right. Yeah. Chopped yeah, up's are. coming in. And um, then, like I said, once in a while you. Your your video goes away and comes back. Okay. Oh, there. Okay. There's there's Joe. Joe, can you? I can't hear you yet. Oh, you're connecting to your audio. <laughs> I see him tapping. Yeah. Sorry, your camera doesn't work, Mark. That's that's a bummer. I'm gonna reboot and come right back. Okay. I, All right. You know, if I can do it, then anybody can. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, we can see you. Can you hear me? Joe, raise your hand if you can hear me. Okay, we cannot hear you. Cannot he hear the same you. Thing you're, I, you're, I see your you your uh, mute button is on. 
uh, from my point of view. But bottom left hand side, you see you should see a mute, mute, like a little microphone, where you can mute a knot. This is the joys of technology, <laughs> Eric. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, we don't get along very well sometimes. Yeah, I know we're going to try and boot. We've we've been doing. Well, I've been oh, using okay. Discord you for. Hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Okay, great. So get, I don't. Well, right. there's a, there's somebody else right there, but <laughs> yeah, you're <laughs> gone. Hey, Eric. This is uh, uh, Joe. I was the first one to reach out to you. Uh, how's it going? So All you're right, there man. now, but uh, Mark is gone. Well, the, right. yeah, Mark there Justice. you are. The I'm here. Switching around, man. That, yeah, I'm here. I'm now. We're waiting for the other Mark to come on. Well, he, that's uh, bizarre because you guys keep switching videos. But I mean, before when I was on this, we were all on the screen. At the oh, same it could. Time. You know, this could be the view, speaker view. Okay, maybe like that. I changed the view on the upper right hand corner, Eric. You see a little button that says view. And if you switch it for, from gallery view to speaker view, maybe that'll change. Up in the right-hand corner is me. Okay. Can you see all of us now? What happens to the fucking video? Yeah. Oh, well. On the... All right, let's, let's try this fucking... This is stupid. Now we lost it. <laughs> it really, I know. Oh, I see you now, Eric. Yeah. Oh, great. So you're switching back and forth still. Okay. Yeah, on, on your from your point of view, I switched the gallery view. I think everyone can switch what they see. And on my point of view, it, it's a right. Now I see all of you. Okay, that's all right. Freaking. All right. There's four oh, people. Fucking there's a. Four, there's four people, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah right. On, that's all. Not yeah. Enough. Oh, yeah. M, yeah. M cries. Yes, that's Chris. <laughs> M Chris. <laughs> you, you can call him the Slunkmeister. He's the Slunkmeister. Yeah, yeah, the what? The what? Yeah, the making... my, the, <laughs> <laughs> the Slunkmeister. The Slunkmeister. It's See, a they... long story, but just slunk. Sl slunk. S L U N K. They won't let me change my oh, name. Oh, I thought you said slut. Yeah, he's slut. Slut. <laughs> don't, don't give him any ideas, please. Oh my God, slunk is. I was going to be like, well, I used to be that, you know, a long time ago <laughs> on the Pantera tour. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, oh, came great. up with that word one night playing online games, and it's another word for jizz. So you're not too far off. <laughs> so yeah, so there you go. I don't know, man. I don't. I'm not so sure that. I really want to know now. <laughs> see? Yeah. See, that's why I'm trying to change it, but they won't let me. I'm stuck now. <laughs> who's I'm they? The show, who's, so. Who is they? The two you see on your screen right now, those other oh, They two won't right let you there. change it, really. Yeah. Well, we're going to call him well, Slunkmeister <laughs> identifying as yeah. Yeah, whatever his, right. his name. He wants to go to Prime Meat or something. I'm that's working, fine. Working on something I like, new. See, I like mine. It says Eric's iPhone. That's right. it. So that's straight, straight to, to the, the point. Trace, no, cut. Yeah. Right. And Mark <laughs> Justice and you guys got nicknames for some reason. <laughs> yep. Well, in, in the in the in the show, my host name is Montag. So that was my nod to uh to Herschel Gordon Lewis, you know, the So it Gore. means it means Monday. There you go. Right. So right. Schmecken Sie Deutsch. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> I, I know my German from watching Hogan's Heroes. You know. <laughs> oh God! You know, when I was growing up, I, the teachers told my parents that they didn't want me watching that show because they portrayed. Because I, when I went to kindergarten, I couldn't speak English, so okay. Um, they told my parents like that they didn't want me to watch that show because they they portrayed the Germans as being stupid in that show, and they didn't want me to be. A, ashamed of who i was sure oh interesting. And this, yeah and this was like first grade like second first second grade you know sure. right right but wow, i thought the show was funny i yeah. didn't look at it that oh, way right right, right. <laughs> no i get it man oh well it is it is great to to get you i know we're on a in about 20 minutes we're gonna have to revamp and reboot this thing <laughs> great and send out another link i know it's it's crazy so just want to be prepared for that but um i'm keeping an eye on that thing and we're recording so as long as um, you know you're mindful of that, uh, what I'm going to do we're going to we're going to start the show you know officially um, with our lovely sign in that that M Chris hates our, ch our, uh, cheesy, yeah. our cheesy intro and then I want to introduce you and then um, then we're just going to start talking 
you know, we're going to ask some questions and just let you talk about anything you want. Um, we've got stuff that we want to know about trouble and the skull and, you know, all the works that you've been doing. So, um, I remember, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, what you remember, you remember and what you don't, you know, fuck it, you know, uh, well, so, there's, 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 it's all in there. It's just that, <laughs> I haven't figured out how to defragment my brain. Yet, so. maybe, we can, maybe we can jog something loose. There's a yeah, lot yeah. of shit in there. There's a lot of shit in there, man. A lot of experience, man. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, and that's I've been great. busy recording, so I'm like, all of a sudden I look at even. Oh, fuck, I didn't answer them. You know? <laughs> hey, we were waiting you're not, patiently. You're not, not the only problem. one, so don't feel bad. Like, that okay. I single you right. out or nothing. Well, I get I get too involved when I'm recording. Like, yeah, I get it, man. Understandable. That's yeah. oh, that's great. So, all right. So I'm gonna introduce us. I am Montag, master of illusion. What goes up must come down, but not always. I'm Chop Top, and stay tuned because this is gonna be heavy. <laughs> and Slugmeister. <laughs> And you, my listening to you, slut. <laughs> See, slut Meister. Slut Meister. That's a new one. And you are Thanks. listening to <laughs> Heavy, Heavy Metal, Metal. Metal. Oh. Horror. <laughs> oh, kiddies, tonight we have a fucking great guest. You are not going to believe it. Eric Wagner is on our show tonight, former frontman for the seminal doom metal band Trouble Lid. Blackfinger, and now The Skull. And for those of you who don't know Freaky. his music, same on you. Ominously low, sludgy guitars, heavy riffs with nods to psychedelica, lyrics that discuss spirituality, addiction, forgiveness, redemption, and are getting ready to go on tour with The Obsessed. Welcome, Eric. It is so nice to have you on our show. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, aside from all the technical problems getting you here, getting everything. Whatever, whatever, man. You know. It's just fucking great to, yeah. to get to meet you. So thank you for taking the time to join us. No we sweat, really man. It. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so I guess, you know, you're, you're gearing up for a tour this summer uh, with The Obsessed. Um, I was really sad to know, like, your first date, well, the first date is going to be in Cleveland, which we're all near Cleveland. That's where we're near. And I was so yeah, sad that froze, you guys weren't going to be there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know? oh. So it was, it was sad to know that you guys weren't going to be, be in our area. But well, where's um, that? Cleveland, near, you know, the, near the Cleveland area. That's where. That's weird because we usually do play Cleveland. But I think it has to do with a uh, new guitar player and – I don't know. Our first show is in Milwaukee for some strange reason, but we are going to, when we do the candle mass tour in April, next April to show in Boston, we're going to stop there. Oh, and hopefully nice. we'll have a new record too. So by oh, then, oh, great. Well, that'd be great. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, hopefully we can come out and see you, you know, what do you mean? <laughs> hopefully. Well, so we'll be able to see you we'll at the there. show. Like we'll be able to say, Hey, Eric, remember <laughs> us Montag. Yeah, yeah. from the show. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. We'll yeah. have to Month deal with, this. uh, computer issues right we'll just be person to person you know yeah. uh-huh it'll so. be my issue you have to deal with me my issues then <laughs> right hey that's great man that's great uh you know i guess i still want to start uh, just asking like a general question like you know what start st yeah start uh what what bands or artists uh influence your early musical tastes oh shit man um the first one was i don't know you know i my cousin was a little bit older than me, and I was like seven, I remember. I remember going to their house, and I walk in the door, and she's like, come here. And obviously, you know how when you're a kid like that, you only remember scenes, you know? I, at least that's me. Um, and she's like, you got to hear this. And it was Nowhere Man by the Beatles. And to this day when I hear that song, I, I knew I, for some reason, even at seven, it seemed like I knew the hell, what he was talking about. And obviously, my cousin knew that I would like music somehow because I don't really remember. But so that was Lennon was my really my main hero. And then you know, as you get older, you got Morrison and Roger Waters, Bowie, like you know. And I mean, growing up a kid, I was in the '60s, so the bubblegum music then was different than it is now. Right. You right. know, that was actually good. You know. Yeah. <laughs> 
No, but then there's like Steppenwolf, and I like Deep Purple was really my favorite hard rock band. Ian Gillen. I forgot him. He goes on the list too. Yeah. My Mount Rushmore. That's cool. Excellent. Let's kind of, uh, I was thinking about this, you know, you mentioned your hero being Lennon and uh, um, obviously you, well, you probably didn't ever get a chance to meet him, but have you ever had an opportunity to meet some of your heroes, some of your musical idols and how'd that go? What was it like? If you well, know? yeah, I, I met Gillen uh, one time and oh. we were in, I was in Pittsburgh at a friend's and they had tickets. Uh, they played someplace. We had like 10th row or something. This was already not with Blackmore wasn't with them anymore, but, and they were trying, I met, like, I went up to Ian Pace, John Lord, I called him, sir, you know. <laughs> uh, he goes, uh, you don't have to do that. I'm like, yes, I do. You earned it <laughs> from me anyway. And uh, so then um, they were, my friends were, you got to go talk to him, dude. You got to. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> <It's Ian laughs> <Gillen." laughs> yeah. So I finally did. He was a little juice, and I went up to him. I'm like, dude, you're number four. And he looked at me kind of funny, like behind Lennon, Waters, and Morrison. And then he like went like this and talked to me for about a half hour or so. But oh, nice. He's, he's lucky. If he would have said anything negative to that, then he would have been done with me because, come on, man. He got number four after them three dudes, whether you like him or not. That's, not that's bad. a compliment. <laughs> sure. That's a compliment. Right, right. So oh, that's, that's awesome. Awesome. Uh, well, on the flip side of that, uh, you know, you're you, – being in the in the industry as long as you have i'm sure you've been approached to many people who idolize you who you're you're their hero i mean how does that go how do you deal with that being, being in that position is it awkward all the time have you developed some kind of not a way no to more. deal with it not, not no more, more. Yeah. Just, i don't know it's just you know it's funny like we were talking about that like just i was talking about ian gillen if i went up to him right now he would not know who who i was you know and that's why some people it's kind of funny to me at the at gigs and stuff, they come up to me. Hey, man, remember that time we smoked a joint out of the back of the <laughs> the venue? I'm like, oh man, that was you. Come on, man. it's like only happened what a million times. Like, <laughs> you know, it's kind of fun. Uh -huh. Then they get what they said, and you know, uh -huh. I'm like, there's no how could I? Sure, you know. Sometimes I don't remember what I what I look like, you know. So <laughs> Eric, Eric, I almost. Oh, sorry, the part I don't like is when people come up to me and start like doing this shit. You know, I'm like, gotcha. come on, man, stop. Mm -hmm. Come up, I'm a human being too. Just come up and talk to me and say hello, like you know, no, no, not just you. this shit. You know, I'm not that. I'm not a god. I'm just some singer in a rock and roll band, man. <laughs> it can be nerve wracking, though. You know, it can be <laughs> yeah. a, a, a guy that you followed and really think highly of. You know, it could be awkward coming up to him and trying to of trying to spit some words like, out. You know, right? Just like it was with me and Gillen. I know, I get it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, I think I'm pretty approachable, and you know, so uh, yeah, people are like scared and nerve. I'm like, sure. well, just stop. You know, right. <laughs> Eric, what I was going to ask a question along those lines. I hate to interrupt, but uh, my kind of goes along with meeting some of our heroes and you know some of those uh, experiences that you've had. But uh, what was it like working with Dave Grohl on the Probot? Uh, it was awesome, Dave, man. Yeah, because yeah, I mean that's an awesome single. I mean he he's obviously a, a huge metal fan and stuff. And I just yeah. give us a little insight in that whole experience, how that came about, and what was that like? You know, go into more detail for us on that. Well, actually, it was while I ran away from the music business I, after I left Trouble in, what, 96 or something to do the Lit album. And I just kind of ran away from the music business. I had enough, you know. And I'll, I come home one day and there's a message on my answering machine. Yes, answering machine. <laughs> and uh, it was some dude saying, hey, we want you to do this song. And all. I'm like, yeah, right. I thought it was bullshit at first, you know. And then... Then finally they called and I was there and I'm like, all right, I'm picking this up and what the see and it was Dave and he so he <laughs> sent me the track he sent me the track and he uh, he had the music recorded already actually that particular song was written for Ozzy oh. during No More Tears I think mine and King Diamond's song Sharon asked him to write a couple tunes and they ended up not using them so one of them was mine that one wow. Uh, 
So it was weird, man, because I sat with a blank piece of paper for two weeks. I didn't, I was like, I can't write anymore. You know, it's been a couple of years, uh, five years or something, you know. Sure. Uh, but then boom, there it was. And we actually got to go to New York and we did it on Headbangers Ball. So we were like the first band ever to play live on Headbangers Ball. It was two, actually, Headbangers Ball 2. Okay. So it was cool. Wino was the guitar, you know, guy from uh, Greg Anderson. And it was funny because during rehearsals, I tell you what, man, that dude is a great drummer. I kept looking back at him I'm like, damn, man. So anyway, they were playing the song wrong with this part. And I was kind of at first afraid to say anything. But then I'm thinking, there is no way on earth am I going on MTV and playing that song wrong. So, you know, so at, at, when we took a break, I'm like, Dave, man, you're playing this song wrong. <laughs> 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 He's like, what, what do you mean? I'm like, so I was hemming it for him because I don't know about music or nothing. I was just kind of doing it for him. He's like, why don't get over here? He's right. <laughs> <laughs> so Dave was, Dave is, I know some people like give him a hard time or something because of their music and shit, but you know what? Fuck off, man. If you don't like it, so what? Doesn't mean they suck. And he was an awesome, great guy. He was cool to me, you know. Yeah. He flew me and my ex, well, ex wife then, but out to New York and stuff and put us up. It was awesome, you know. Awesome. And he was so, obviously a fan. So that's kind of awesome when, as a fan coming to you uh, and working together as, as two really amazing musicians, different genres. Um, but that had to feel, you know, incredible. Like, you know, the fact cool. that he's also working with someone he admires too. That's, that's, yeah, that's he, he was into the Skull Record is when he first heard us. Okay, He's from, what, Virginia or something in that area yeah. down there, D.C. and Baltimore, Virginia there. That was always a – that was like the first time we pulled into a city and was in Baltimore where there was there was like that kind of music fans like, you know, uh, 85. We didn't – up until then, we didn't really know anybody that was into that besides maybe Death Row, you know. But we didn't know Victor and them then. So it was pretty cool. Obsessed, obsessed. Asylum was there supporting us. And we were like freaking out, man. This is cool. Let's move to Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you know, I, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about those early trouble records. And you had mentioned before you were Catholic. You weren't really practicing at the time. But even now, there's still a lot of spirituality in, in, in referencing in your music, you know, songs like Breathing Underwater, The Door, Send <laughs> Judas Down, um, and then, you know, the trouble stuff with the tempter, the skull, all these, you know, Christian over, you know, themes. Um, but the songs work on both, you know, spiritual and, and you know, kind of, uh, you know, not, not spiritual level. So I, I want to ask you a little bit, like, do you feel like when you're writing these songs about spirituality, are, are you feel like you're working through spiritual situations inside, um, you know, your own spiritual convictions, or is it just a theme that you like writing about? No, I'm like, I usually, you know, I just write what's going on at that time. If you listen to, if you start at the first song, The Tempter, and listen to every song in order, all the way to the last skull record that I will be done. It's one life. You know, it's just what I see, how I feel, what's going on, you know, and that I think a lot of times it seems, it appears sometimes why people can relate to it because it's it's them too, you know, you know what I mean in a way. Mm -hmm. and for some reason but there's a few people here and there that kind of understood what I was talking about, you know, or that it or they put it to, to themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. So now I never write, we never write a certain way. I never had, it's just whatever comes out, comes out. Okay. And, that, and that's just that's it. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes it, sometimes people ask me like, what, you know, what I was working on, they're like, well, what's it about? I'm like, I don't know. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> that's how it Eric, is sometimes. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Eric, I'm sorry. Uh, along those same lines though, what is your? Would you say you were most you're most you were most pleased with as a trouble record, and one that you were like, yeah, could have wished you could have been better. What do you think in your own, you know, your favorite, and maybe your one that said, eh, maybe we could have done probably the self-titled on 
Deaf American, that one okay. probably is my favorite record. And, and, and the lyrics at that point, I think uh, Run to the Light was, is the one other one you were talking about. It, that was our tweener. We were like kind of at that point, the first two records were written almost at the same time, most of it. Because we were, we didn't have a label yet. We were just writing songs, and then "Run to the Light" was the first album where we actually, okay, you got to make another record, you know, and mm -hmm. and we were kind of evolving because we were writing now full time, or at least I was, you know. So by the time we hit "Deaf American," I look back at "Run to the Light" now. That that's a little bit of in between, or like we didn't quite know where we were going. We were coming out of this. And to me, the, the mix or the mastery, whatever you want to call it, sucks on that record. To, to me, and I, so who has, I think Bruce might probably still has it. He had a tape of that album before it was mixed, and it sounded just like the first two. Obviously, that's our sound and the guitar players and me singing and shit. So right. the, the dude that mixed it, in my opinion, sucked. And then we seen he was doing coke and shit. Well, no wonder, you know. <laughs> yeah. God. So. Yeah, I I have to agree, Eric. That 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 self titled is my favorite in the, in the Trouble catalog as well. Yeah. I, mean, I like I like all your guys, all the work you did with them. But that to me, that man, that's that's the one actually. Uh, Montag, Mark introduced me to in college. It was the first taste of Trouble I ever had. And I was like ninety one, man, and I was like, yeah. who is this? This is fantastic. So yeah, that's my back. favorite album. The heaviest one is probably the skull. It took me ten years to listen to that thing again. It was too depressed. It was depressing. And mm. some people always back then they were asking me, "Hey, are you gonna in interviews or whatever? Are you gonna write another record like the skull?" And I'm like, "I hope not." <laughs> you oh, know, yeah, because uh, I yeah. never want to feel like that again. Right, right. You know? Well, the self-titled record is your. That's my favorite as well. It was like something happened, and you were there was a a different feel vibe to the music. And you're also kind of going into this kind of psychedelic phase that I think mm -hmm. continued with manic frustration and plastic greenhead, which I also love. I mean, that, that album is just so good. It, like songs like flowers, you could definitely really feel that kind of psychedelic kind of groove that's, coming that's in. That's me. That's me. You know, I started then writing lyrics during run to the light, even getting away from, uh, well, a lot had to do with people thought we were a Christian band, I started changing and painting, I don't know, painting pictures with words. I mean, it's still there, but it's not, I'm not blunt about it anymore. Right. You know what I mean? Sure. If that makes sense. Yeah. So uh, by the time we hit Deaf American there, that was, man, here we are, some dudes from Aurora, Illinois. You know, we signed with a major label. We're working with Rick Rubin, and this is like fucking awesome, you know? <laughs> yeah, so, right. and Maddox, right. Maddox too, man. That I think that was our peak, kind of. That's different <laughs> too, and I don't like the the mix so much because back then in '93 they called it like a radio mix, you know. Hmm. It's a little bit too bright and troubly to, for me. I like it, deep, you know, yeah. warmer and stuff. But that's me. Yeah. Well, the skull certainly, you know, your skull records really get that low end. I mean that. You know, for those which are asleep, that album is so fucking heavy. You know, that first yeah. first track comes in, it's like this, oh my God, it's just heavy. It punches you, you know? And then then this, you know, great riffing. Um, are When you write, you know, you're writing the lyrics, but do you also contribute to like, okay, here's what I want it to sound like. <laughs> Come in with this, play oh a riff here. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Rod and Lothar now, because we're right now, uh, well, we actually started on a new Skull record, but then I had to, to take take off and do this record. I, you know, if, I bitch about the pandemic too, or the so-called pandemic. But I, you know, if that didn't happen, I probably wouldn't be doing this solo album right now. I, we would have started working on a new Skull record instead. Uh, so whatever. So what, I lost my train of thought. What was the question? Oh yeah, I yeah. stick my nose in it. Yeah, they there are <laughs> now they're going. Well, let's not send it to Eric yet, Mike. Let's, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. But they, um, they, they know me now, you know, and that, and what I bring to the table. And that's, so they, now they, at first we had our moments because of it, but I did it with trouble too, you know. Rick Rubin is the one who taught me how to arrange songs. 
okay. actually, you know. And, uh, yeah, because he was producing Slayer and, uh, and a lot of other big bands. At the time. Yeah, because yeah, there's a market difference between Run to the Light and then Troubled, self-titled. Oh, it's way. Like, it's like the, it's like the, it was, I remember when I first read, heard it, I'm like, oh my God, it was, it was just like a different band almost in some ways, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, that was the same in the beginning too, actually, with that first Trouble record. I have no idea how we got from our first demo we did to The Tempter. There's a missing link somewhere, and I don't know what it is. Probably because there isn't one, just like Darwin, too. He's full of shit, you know? <laughs> so there is no missing link. I don't know. Last time I went to the zoo, it was still monkeys there, like, or apes or wherever they say we came from, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they're, still, they're still there. Where are they? You know, and if there was a missing link, like, wouldn't they have been the slaves or something? I don't know, you know? Yeah, right, right. Just, yeah, just FYI, guys, I got a message from my Zoom saying, you like what you're, we're doing? We're, we're not going to limit you to 40 minutes. So they're, I think they're going to give us another 40 minutes or just let us keep on recording. So who's to play? Up, yeah, so that's like the filing. <laughs> One fucking thing good happens. You know, <laughs> who's, who's, who's they? It was Zoom. Yeah, Zoom. They, the people at behind Zoom. Zoom. Big brother. Usually, usually <laughs> these, these free Zoom meetings like we're doing are limited to 40 minutes unless you have a, a paid Zoom account. But apparently, oh. they're giving us a throwing us a bone, saying we're not going to stop you recording, so you you know you don't have to worry about your time. I'm like fucking hey, that's great. I didn't want to have to send emails to everybody again, you know. Yeah. Talking. So yeah. So anyway, that's that's great. Um, uh, this is still so surreal, Eric. I'm just <laughs> you know we're always like fuck, you know. I'll I'll jump in with uh, yeah, you ahead, know man. you're talking about uh, recording a new record, kind of the recording process. Uh, 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 just the whole creative process for you. You know, I've listened to a lot of different musicians over the years and everybody's got kind of peculiar uh, creative processes that they go through. I think I remember a, an interview with uh, Kerry King from uh, Slayer said he just sits in a, a dark room and smokes weed and writes his music. But, you know, I, I'm interested. Do you have any kind of peculiar things that you like to do uh, when it's time to write songs or take something from an idea to the... Um, the yeah, you know, I mean, when we're not working on anything, if I... I have a book, like, and if I hear something or see something, movie, you know, I, I do that all the time. I mean, even Run to the Light, man, that was from Poltergeist. You know, that oh, little short nice. thing. Okay. Nice. All, are, all are welcome. <laughs> Run to the Light. So, awesome, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's great, that's great, man. And that's, that's not the only one. So I write that down. So when, when it's time to start working on a record, I start getting riffs from these guys. Uh, first, I, first, I might kind of write or uh, put my sh shit in order where i am where did mm -hmm. i leave off in the last record sometimes i'll even listen to the last record to know mm -hmm. what was going on because i don't once i've done recording i don't listen to the record too much anymore because i've already heard it by then about uh one million eight hundred sixty five thousand <laughs> two hundred forty nine times you yeah, know yeah right. so um then you know we start they start putting songs together and and then they send it to me <laughs> and that's when I see I'm not a musician. I'm a fan. Plus I have to sing it. Mm -hmm. So I have to feel the song. And if I don't if I can't get into it, well sorry, but the song's gonna suck. As simple as that. Yeah. yeah. Because people aren't stupid. You know, when they we push play, if they don't think I mean it, then they're not gonna listen to it again. You know? Right, right. So it's gonna come across, certainly. Mm -hmm. So do you have a, a, a like volumes of these books that you've written in and kept ideas in over the years? Do you keep all that no. stuff? Oh that well, would be fair. But that I would wrote be it awesome all. to I see. Wrote, but it's, once it gets on a song and stuff, then it's just all my notes and shit go into the wastebasket. I used oh, to that's use a shame. I used to use paper, you know, uh, uh, and write all the time. But now yeah. I got this computer here. It's like <laughs> in Gmail they have Google Docs, <laughs> and I can email that to myself and make changes the whole time I'm working on sure. shit. Yeah. Fucking awesome, man! Just but thought what an amazing uh, piece of memorabilia it would be to to have you know a year's worth of your ideas written all down in book in a book somewhere. You know that. Well, would be so it, cool. it, it, in a way, I don't. In a way, I, I never made copies. There's they're like originals. Yeah. Like in a way, so mm -hmm. it's just like it was kind of cool watching. Uh, What's that movie about Mozart? Uh, Amadeus. You know, Amadeus, where he's yeah. like, when the uh, Salieri is talking to his wife about, and she said, "Oh no, these are originals." You know, uh, he doesn't keep 
the, you see them throwing it away on mm -hmm. the that's kind of how I do it too. Gotcha. Yeah, and, I, I, and I was doing that before I saw that. And I'm like, oh wow, that's cool. <laughs> Being the dude in the mo mo movie about Mozart, do it the same way, kind of. So I'm like, that's cool. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Eric, cool. Eric, you, you have one of the most uh, iconic voices. I want to say in metal, uh, recognizable, I should say. That as soon as you play a song, it's like, oh, that's Eric Wagner. I can understand it. What is maybe a? What do you do to keep your voice still sounding? as pure and in my opinion just just as well as it did back in the day now we all you know we age and stuff and our voices change and that's just the natural order but what do you do to try to keep your you know voice especially like getting ready for a tour uh rehearsing well be before i was smoke more cigarettes <laughs> 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 i remember back in the day when i switched from cools to marble and i was all worried because of cools or menthol. I was like, oh my God, is this going to change things? You know, it was funny. <laughs> so, but now this new album here I'm working on, it's the first time that I've made a record without smoking cigarettes. I've been vaping. I don't know if you noticed it, but yeah. uh, I, I've been trying to quit since last October, which I smoked when I was 15. So that was like 40 mm. something years, man. Anyway, uh, I forgot what I was going to say, man. About your voice. Keeping oh, your yeah. Voice. And, and to be honest with you, can I, can I still hit the notes I did with Manic Frustration? No. But I do think at this moment in time that I'm probably singing better than I have in a very long time. Oh, wow, man. You know, and I just, uh, along with Rick Rubin at that time, he sent me to this voice coach in L.A. by the name of Ron Anderson. And if it wasn't for him and Ruben, really, I would not be sitting here anymore talking to you. So he taught me to, and I do this when I work with other guys too, with making demo. I used to work in the studios and stuff. And the singers always wanted to do something because they wanted to, not because they could. I'm like, dude, man, you can't do that. You, well, I didn't say you suck at it, but you, you, you know, it's not good, man. You have to. Uh, to your strengths, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. make that good. So you're not Robert Plant, dude, so quit doing that shit. Or Ian Gillen. I'm sorry, yeah. but there's only one dude that can scream like that, and you're not it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, I can't, and I can't do it either. So nice. so that's that's the whole point. You just have to be yourself. That's yeah. all. Cool. Thank you. Uh, everyone, the... everyone is already taken anyway. Right. Yeah. There you go. Be yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, what uh, What attracted you to the doom metal sound? I mean, you're like the seminal doom metal. This. What What was the first attraction to that style of metal or hard rock versus anything else? Personally, for you, you know what What about that? How did that kind of instill your, itself into you? I didn't even know there was such a thing as doom. They didn't call that till years later, man. In a, in the 80s started out to be the big label on everything, you know, mm -hmm. th thrash, this. Now there's like, what, 10 different split things from doom, sure. funeral, funeral doom, and <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, I just, for some strange reason, I mean, obviously when we were in high school and later on, the people we hung with and party with, all of a sudden, the, the get, Judas Priest, Get Your Wings came into the picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, or Sad Wings of Destiny, I mean. Uh, Sabbath, I mean, obviously. Purple, you know, all those guys. UFO, Thin Lizzy. So, yeah. for some strange reason, when, when Trouble first started, we tuned a uh, step down, which the skull is there now, too. But <laughs> I just like that tone for some reason. Yeah. You know, it's just. Yeah. So, we're not trying to write doom songs like. We just write music, and I don't give a shit what song it is. If you put it through a Marshalls with, a, a, like, a Les Paul or something tuned down to a D, it's going to be heavy sounding, you know? Oh, yeah. So people, when they ask me all the time in interviews, like, they're like, well, how do you write a good Doom record? I'm like, don't listen to Doom. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And that's why some of these bands sound the same. Well, who they right. they yeah. listen to that kind of music? Their influence is that kind of music, just, and that's all they listen to. Well, what do you think it's going to sound like after a while? Sure, you know? right, yeah, right. 
Okay. So yeah, you're a pioneer. And I like you know? exploring things. Yeah. You know, I'm not in trouble. We were kind of stuck in the little trouble box. Mm-hmm. You know, uh-huh. but ever since I'm not stuck in that, I can do yeah. whatever the fuck I want. So. Well, that box expanded as you went to the psychedelic stuff, you know, and it kind of had this blend, I thought. And it, and even in the last record you did with them, I thought it was more, had a lot of more bluesy elements that was even coming in that I thought was interesting because like, okay, this band is evolving. I like to hear when bands kind of change and evolve. And I like to wonder, know, like, what, what are they thinking and, and going through at that time? So I, I've heard those evolutions in your music and now the skull sounds I think the heaviest, <laughs> like you have been. It's next. Well, you know, when we first started the skull, uh, speaking of spit mind condition, there's a lot of people that kind of did, I don't know if they don't like it or they just don't get it. You know, mm-hmm. it's like people did, this one dude met me out, he was like <laughs> confronted me out at the, the doorway of this festival. He's like, man, simple mind condition is pretty good, except I don't like the order. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, really, dude? And I kind of told him what the record was about. So he, next time I saw him, he comes up to me, he goes, dude, you're right. <laughs> Thanks. Really? Thanks. Really? Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> sure, so, you were waiting for that validation. Wow. I'm saying, yeah. you know, well, now fuck. I've lived my life. I can die happy now. <laughs> yeah. And the skull, yeah. when we first started, um, which is a kind of a cool story too. But anyway, uh, we wanted to just do the first album stuff. The first two albums, uh, uh, Last Judgment there, because them guys didn't do that shit anymore. And even when I was still with them, we didn't either for some reason. They, Bruce was mainly that one. He didn't He didn't think the two, you know, it's kind of like Purple Mach 1 and Mach 2 and all that, that, that they fit together. I'm like, bullshit. You know, it's our history... Why not? There are people out there that want to hear it, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And when we started with the skull and we come out there with the tempter and all that shit, you know? So, uh, so we just started that. And, the, and I think doing that, I hate to use the cliche, get back to your roots, but in a way it kind of did. Yeah. So we were doing the first two album songs just, and we were doing some off plastic green head because that was the only record that, uh, Ron, Oli, and I were on it together with. was So we did like another day, which totally fit that shit, you know? So I think that put in our head how to write. Not how, but it, I think that formed the way the skull is heavy like that, you know? Yeah. And yeah. So I, it ended up being a good thing, really. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. now they, so now they, they follow us all of a sudden when I see them do the old shit, I started laughing. <laughs> Eric, I also noticed that, you know, in all of your projects, you know, you bring up that, that difference in musicality, like between the Trouble and the Skull material, but even with Lid, it had more of the uh, 70s trippy psychedelia stuff. And then, of course, Blackfinger, which I just listened to, discovered recently, and I actually got you guys a second CD coming to me tomorrow. So, uh, but, uh, and then going on to the Skull, but there's always these, like Blackfinger has these almost like candle mass meets Skull or Trouble moments. And then, like I said, Lid's more 70s and kind of more in that psychedelia and then of course the skull is just almost an amalgamation of all those bands together so i do notice those differences those subtle nuances that maybe other people don't pick up and well another- black finger black fin- you know it's just me you know i mean in the skull there's me the trouble there was me and all those little things that are similar with all those bands is me and at least i'm not saying i'm dude or nothing that's not what i mean I just mean those little elements that are in each one is is like me, you know, and mm-hmm. Blackfinger had a lot of the skull shit, but it also had other things in it, you know, and yeah. I tell you what, man, from 2014, when that first Blackfinger came out till now, I'm working on my fifth album right now. And this has been like, for some strange reason, the most creative period of my whole life. So it went black finger skull, black finger skull. Now I'm doing a solo record. Now it's skull records coming. So it's yeah. been switching off, like you know, and you know, some people like go, "Well, the black finger it sounds like the skull. Why don't you just do one band?" I'm like, "Who fucking cares, man? I'm gonna do ten of them and all sound the same." 
you Keep know, doing what, what you're doing, brother, because it all yeah. sounds great to me. Man. Yeah, people are, so, people just yeah. have to bitch about something. Oh yeah, right, right. That, I mean, as, as a creative person, you you want different outlets, even though you are the the singular element that unifies everything. It's still a different creative outlet. You know, well, it, it, black yeah, is not going to be in trouble. It's not going to be skull. It's not going to be lit. Well, you know, it's, but but it's it gives you different ways to express who you are creatively, you know? Well, black figure is the difference is a little bit is because it's just me. I mean, I write with different people, but it's just me. And somebody's got to make the final decisions, that kind of thing, you know? So, but with the skull, it's more of a collaboration. Ron and I, uh, and Lothar has been with us since the beginning. And so we're kind of like the three of us have been there from the beginning, you know, and, with different drummers and different guitar players. But so when we first started the skull Ron, I told him I, I'm retired from the music business. I'm just a senior advisor. Now you fucking run it. But if there's something important, I got to know about it. That kind of thing. You know, like I said, mm -hmm. senior advisor, but as far as the music business goes, fuck off. You know, <laughs> I hate it, dude. I hate it. What bullshit. But anyway, what's cool about the label we're on is that Ron knows him and his wife and stuff. We don't have a contract. It's a handshake deal. And when I seen him one time at Ron's house for Christmas, I kind of told him, like, dude, this is pretty cool. I wish it could always be like this. I mean, yeah. you do what you say. We do what we say. And, and it goes together and everything's happy. Like, mm -hmm. I, can't, I don't get it, but whatever. Yeah. You know? yeah. Speaking of uh, labels, uh, you know, there was, it seems to be a common theme with a lot of metal bands, particularly in the 80s where you know they hit a certain uh amount of popularity and the label seems to inevitably want to step in and change who they are and, and make them you know whatever's popular at the time alternative grunge punk whatever it might be did you ever face any of any of that shit with your you know in any of the labels that you you've been with i think they Don't were afraid i think they were afraid, afraid to, uh, to do that to us like you know <laughs> wow. even our even our manager on, on, on deaf american we had right then he was from L.A. and he flew to Chicago to meet us and stuff. He grew a goatee to make him look a little tougher and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was cracking up, man. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I mean, uh, after a while, he knew better because I would just tell him to fuck off. Like, but, you know, he tried doing, he wanted Good to for do you. this Smith song. I'm like, what are you talking about, Smith? Who is that, anyway? <laughs> Nice. Here, I'm going to answer it for you. No. Great. Well, good for you. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. But, any, but no, I mean, um, like I said, man, we just, that, that's the one thing I think I'm, I'm most proud of all these years is that we just did what we did. Like, we yeah. didn't try, you know, a lot of bands, like you said, when Grunt, like here in Dallas and Chase, all of a sudden every label on the planet is signing those kind of bands. Well, yeah. I'm sorry, but there's not everybody's not good so mm -hmm. so we stuck to our thing it wasn't it, a conscious we just were with who we are and i think that's what i'm most proud of like i said just be yourself that is something to be proud of it seems mm -hmm. and it seems like every band that managed to do that managed to stand their ground and be who they were came out with some of their best music ever you know after they kind of gave the labels an ultimatum you know they you know it never went to that you know yeah well, for, good. it never yeah. really did <laughs> Oh, oh, great, man. Cool. Um, I want to ask you, uh, you know, you're, you are getting on, on the tour and you're going to be hitting, and I'm, I'm glad you're coming back to Cleveland in April because we want to be there, man. Um, but you're playing these, these great, like, intimate clubs, you know, like close enough where the fans can, like, reach out and touch you. You could talk to them. Because um, I was watching some video of, of the Skull on tour, like you're playing St. Vitus Club and, all these, you know, these these other venues where you were like literally talking to van, you know, fans between between songs. So from a fan's point of view, this is like fucking fantastic because now you, I mean, you you are there. If you're at a at a coliseum and you're in the thousandth row, you you can't you're not going to have any reaction at all, you know. But here in this intimacy, you can talk. You you you're real close. So from that point of view, it's great. So I want to know like, what is it like from the band's point of view? To, to play in a venue where, you know, you can interact with your fans or they're right there in front of you. How, how is that? I kind of, I don't, you know, sure, it's fun playing on a big stage in front of two, 3,000 people, whatever, or at the Dynamo, 100,000, you know, but 
the fans are so far away. It's like, it almost feels like you're just rehearsing or something, you know, with a light show and all that. Not all the time, but uh, I kind of dig it, man. You know, thousand seaters, even like, well, we did um, in Belgium, we did Desert Fest, and there was like 1,500 in that on that moment in that where we were playing and they were right there too. And I tell you what, we had a fucking blast, man. And so did they, you know, we started smoking weed on with people. I always pass it to the people out in the audience. And we just had a great time, you know, know man. and the day before they wanted us to hurry up and get there, which I was like, Oh dude, why would you say yes to this? They wanted us to play a little intimate show in the basement in one of the rooms and not tell nobody what it is and just so many like 30 tickets and shit but obviously people found out who it was but and it was just a little room with like i said 30 40 people were in there and man it was so cool even ron goes dude i turned it into a storyteller's like kind of and i tell you what it was i, I it was i'll never forget it because it was really fun and the people were and they were like oh my god this actually is a human being <laughs> really <laughs> oh that's great so, so yeah i like shit awesome. like that you know it, i it's a lot to me though it is easier playing in front of 2000 than it is two you know yeah mm -hmm. so when we get together in cleveland we can maybe hang out before or after the show and smoke some pot with you? Would that be cool? Well, yeah, why not? Okay, I can, excellent. Ten, year, ten years from now, you can ask me if I remembered you. So. <laughs> or you can ask us next time you see us. Hey, remember us smoking pot with me? I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's no. cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I saw something on, on, your, on your music site where you have the uh, American IPA with Metal Monkey Brewing, you know, till the sun turns black. Uh, I just wanted to ask about that because not every band has like a beer. You know, for them, how did how did that work out? Do you love IPAs or all beers or you know, no? How does work out? I don't. The IPAs give me a stomach ache. I mean, <laughs> I like the taste and all that, but they give me a stomach ache. I didn't know at first why, but it was all the hops and shit. So okay. I'm not a huge beer drinker anyway. Uh, I'll have some from time to time. Lothar, he's the beer connoisseur but anyway he he knows the dudes at metal monkey i mean obviously they know who we were but well, he yeah. was friends of us and they want they wanted to do a beer and we're like okay why not you know <laughs> cool i got i still oh, yeah. got one yeah it's weird because they got the new album cover, but the title is from the first one. But <laughs> oh, the skull! There but it's it is. pretty cool. Yeah, great. Yeah. I need one of those so, to go next to this. My trooper yeah. beer, Iron Maiden trooper beer. That would right. really look nice on my shelf next to this. Well, this one's still closed too, man. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I bet exactly. it. This I bet it too. I don't taste good <laughs> anymore, but <laughs> yeah, I got this at least Thank 15 you. years ago. <laughs> oh so, yeah, it was fun. It was cool. It actually. It was on tap around Chicago in places and stuff for a while. So I don't know nice. what's going on anymore, but nice man. So all right, um, I uh, I want to ask you like a theoretical question, and just you know we've been trying to think of ways we can involve our guests. That's just not the straight Q and A, but we've we're having a blast talking with you. But mm -hmm. if if you could create a super group, you know which four musicians, past or present, would you want? To play with and they cannot be anyone that you have ever played with already so just like what four musicians would you want to be the basis of your band any super group well i don't know <laughs> <laughs> with me with me in it or just yeah no with me. you in it you're in it oh, you're singing. Well, four other guys know. you can sing you're what the singer musicians? yeah you're the singer you, i was you just get gonna four say Morris would be the singer but i'd have to step aside <laughs> I don't know, man. I think drummer wise, <laughs> drummer wise, I might stick Ian Pace back there. Okay, you know maybe. Yeah, he's a great drummer. He's a really underrated drummer. I I, I don't know, man. Bass players, actually, the best bass player I saw was Sean Entwistle, but I don't think he would dig playing Doom or anything. <laughs> so I can't think, dude. I don't know That's guitar okay. players. Guitar players, I don't know. I mean. I mean, I was a huge fan of Blackmore and, and stuff, 
I owe me and them guys, but yeah, you know, I I don't know, dude. No, that's all right, man. It's just Paige, a guess. throwing it out Paige, there, you know. Page was a lot better on records than he was live. Hmm. And plus, he wrote that shit, so nobody can say nothing about that, dude. I don't think. Right. Oh, he sucks live. Yeah, whatever. Write a song, <laughs> write an album like Zeppelin Two, and then see if it matters anymore. Right. So right. shut up. <laughs> yeah. How do you uh, how do you deal with all that? Like it seems like nowadays, man, the the negativity is just pervasive. Oh, fuck, dude. And it's it's terrible. Everybody's just looking to rip everyone down. I can't imagine being an artist, a creator nowadays, particularly online. It's vicious. But how do it's you deal horrible. with that? Do you just have a thick skin these days and just you know, tell them all to fuck off? Or, I mean, have you learned some coping mechanisms when it comes to dealing with that kind of shit? It takes every ounce of energy from my soul sometimes not to comment Yeah. on stupid shit. That, not so much about me, really. I mean, <clears throat> you know, when it's our, like on YouTube, our videos, the comments, and all that kind of stuff, there's really not much negative that way. <laughs> but in general, like Facebook, that's all it is. Yeah. You know, and I, I barely go on anymore. And the only reason I'm still on it is because of the bands and stuff. You mm -hmm. know, otherwise, I hate, I hate it. I it's like too. every, yeah. no, you know, Same. people go, I I don't know, using an example like uh, just from band, you know, uh, I think Iron Maiden sucks. Fight me. So, right, right. Why can't uh -huh. you say, man, I love Led Zeppelin, man? And instead, I mean, it's like, it's just as easy to be negative as it mm -hmm. is or positive, like, you know, yeah. say positive thing. But ever since the Trump thing, man, that really, I couldn't take it anymore. I was unfollowing people, deleting people. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't want to see it every single day. Fuck, man. There's yeah. still people that can't get over it. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> it's just like, get a grip. You know, yeah. and now you don't. Now you don't hear nothing about nothing with this idiot. You know, right. so <laughs> nobody says nothing. Well, what was he doing? Nothing. You know, hiding in the basement. Yeah, that's why I've avoided Facebook. I, I just started using Facebook a month ago, literally like a month ago, because because of this show. Because right. Ron Tag wanted me to get on there yeah. just so we could communicate a little bit. That's easier. right. You weren't That's so really special it. that you had to get a special email. Uh, yeah, else don't want to You're not uh, that special, Swan. It. It's the negativity. I, I can't take it either. Oh, right. my God. I use it as a tool yeah. for the music. That's it. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, it used to be people for a long time, you know, people had to post pictures of their supper. I'm like, great, dude. I don't really <laughs> want to know. Uh -huh. what you're eating really <laughs> honestly don't give a shit yeah. <laughs> you know or uh -huh. what you think or anything to be honest right. but then uh -huh. i gotta remember like i forget this that i have almost five thousand friends on there yeah uh -huh. so they're doing that <clears throat> kind of to their own crop you know when i first joined facebook i knew everybody that i was friends with uh -huh. so then obviously the stupid friend requests started coming in fans of the band and, and shit and I just started letting them in, and that mm -hmm. changed everything, you know. So yeah. I don't, out of what forty five hundred friends I got in there, I deleted like a thousand people over the last couple of years, man. Yeah. Uh, it, the the ones that are the weirdest are when you're dead. Well, this dude's dead. What are my friends with him for anymore? Oh. <laughs> oh my God. Well, that's an easy delete. <laughs> Done. I don't think he's going to respond. Yeah, yeah. No, hurt, no hurt feelings there. No hurt feelings. Well, you're, you're, I, at that point, you could only have 5,000. I'm like, well, you're taking up space, man, now. <laughs> Room for the living. Plus, I don't know who you are anyway. So yeah. who cares, man? <clears throat> Oh. So, yeah, so people that have, like, little 300 people, they, they do that. They talk because they're their people. I, I get it. I forget that sometimes, you know. But yeah, for the most part, uh, it's just a, a Facebook balls, yeah. you know. It's wow. It's <laughs> Wow. You yeah. know, and I always say there's, there's nothing different. The, this planet has been exactly the same since the beginning of time. And how we treat each other. The only difference is now that I have this little rectangle mm -hmm. right here that I see you guys with beaming all the bullshit in the palm of my hand, like right here. Right. But before you didn't know about it. So then you mm -hmm. didn't care. I was a kid, man. We went outside and played baseball and shit. Not yeah. sit in their room on these phones, like, you know, right. 
like the social dilemma that documentary. That's pretty good to watch. Uh, it's uh, sometimes amazing. I, sometimes I wish I didn't see it, but I'm glad I did. It's a real life like, opener, isn't it? Oh my God! There's like kids; they commit suicide because somebody they don't like my stuff that I post anymore. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow, man! I think I think uh, Facebook was was really not a good thing. It started out maybe. Like that, I watched that movie one time where it was like for college people. I'm not so sure anymore. Uh, Facebook is a CIA's wet dream. <laughs> they know where you are, who you are, what you look like, what your kids look like, what you're eating for supper. Where I went on vacation, your house is empty right now. Let's go over there. You know, I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. You know, our, our drummer Brian from Liverpool, they wouldn't let him in the country. He was, uh, they stopped him in Dublin. Because there's a U.S. embassy, uh, or a, what do you call that, customs there. And a week before, he flew to New York with a friend to see Angel in New York. I'm like, you dummy. We should have said something. We would have had you stay then. Dude, they do everything. And they even said to him, why don't they get Sean to fill in for you? And Sean was a drummer that we used, Sean Staley, um, so they, they knew everything about Brian and stuff. It was weird, man. Mm. So now he can't he, he couldn't play with us anymore, you know. Oh, we used him a couple times in Europe and shit. He's a good dude. I like the drummer that was in Cathedral, that dude. Yeah. So so I don't know, man, <laughs> you know. And it's gonna get worse. Mm -hmm. AI is out of yes. control. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah that, that documentary was a real that scared the shit out of me to be honest. You know, they the way they build a profile of every single person, you know, they, they know what's, everything. <laughs> what's weird. I was logged out of Facebook and I was looking for something like to, I needed something to buy or whatever. I was looking at Amazon, all the places. So the next morning I, I usually go on in the mornings with my coffee and shit. There was the stuff that I was looking at the night mm -hmm. before. I'm like, yeah. man, it's scary. So I, yeah. The I've first time that happened before it. too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now I I just expect it. Yeah. You know, if I well, do a I search, changed. I'm looking for a I'm looking for a camera or whatever, and it's all over my fucking feed. You know, I I've switched. Watched, yeah. I switched browsers about two months ago or so to Brave, and I use DuckDuckGo oh. for the search engine now. In two months or two and a half, three, whatever has been on, there's already eighty thousand that that they see that you can't do it. They block all that shit. And they can't see what you're doing, yeah. and there's no app. Not right now. You go on the internet. I'm reading an article. And this thing will come up like, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, brave. <laughs> like over eighty thousand, they block trackers and and ads and wow. stuff like that in mm. just three months. Eighty thousand. I'm like, damn, man. This, mm -hmm. That's all they got to do, or something. Right. Jesus. So yeah, that makes it makes it a little better mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. Oh. Just anyway. switching topics a little bit. Um, That'd be fine are, with me. We are heavy metal <laughs> horror. Uh, are you a horror movie fan at all? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, I was never a huge slasher movie or mm -hmm. guy, you know? Yeah. I was more into, I think there's a difference between a scary movie and a horror movie, you sure. know? Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in our 20s, we used to go to all of them and sneak into this one. Like, we were just, I was cracking up as I saw an ad in, uh, I have fire stick for Motel Hell. Yes. You know, I'm like, yes. Takes all kinds of Get the pig head on and the chainsaw and drag him out of the ground. Yeah. Takes all kinds of fritters to make Barbara Vincent fritters. <laughs> So I mean, after a while, they're all the same to me, you know. Like I said, yeah. a, 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 to me, I like a good scary movie that you're actually thinking about, right. you know. Uh, I was always more into to like not like ghosts or that kind of sure. scary mm -hmm. movie, you know. Like I remember, and it's not a great movie, but I just watched it not too long ago again. But the, this movie called The Others. With Nicole Kidman, oh, it was yeah, cool. Yeah, that's actually it was cool. That was creepy. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's cool about it is, the, after you're done watching it the first time and you know what happened, mm -hmm. when you watch it for the second time, you're looking now at it from a different perspective. 
right it is freaky like you know right. oh. now you so, see it like yes well now you're seeing it now you're seeing from a different point of view right and you see things that you didn't see the first time right just all the like, clues yeah just like like book of eli is like that and Mm -hmm. Even Pulp Fiction, man, the more you watch that movie, the more... Di there was times at the 10th time I saw something. I'm like, oh, my God, it's hilarious. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> to me, that those guys have my attention. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. they can do that. Whether they do it on purpose or not, I don't know. But, I mean, my first time we went to the theater to see it, it was, and that's not when it came out, but at, at the moment, I think I was 16 or 17. We went to see The Exorcist. And at that time, man, that was the scariest movie I've ever seen. Uh -huh. You know, but now when I watch it, eh, you know, whatever. But at that moment, I was 16 years old. We went to the theater and I'd never seen anything like that before. At that point, that and Jaws yes. at that time, you know. Yeah. When that dude's head popped out popped of that on the boat, boat under the water. That's the, that's the moment, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, man. That was horrifying. The dude terrifying. next to me fell out of his seat, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, jump scares weren't that, you know, the, you know, everybody does them now. But, man, back then, that was, oh, mm -hmm. my God. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, eight, eight years old or so, seven or eight, when I saw Jaws <laughs> in the theater. Yeah. And I remember, I remember being so terrified. I'm like watching it like this, you know, covering my eyes. Yeah. And that when that head pops out, I'm like, "Fuck, this is it." <laughs> I know. You know, you know even even movies like like What Lies Beneath. You know, I mean, it's like mm -hmm. it's not scary, but it is a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. so I, I, that's what more I'm more into, sure. like the mm -hmm. good script. And this shit here, you know, I mean, right? Yeah, seen slashers it, seen to it, one note. Yeah, seen it, no. did it, done it, seen it, seen it, done it, yeah. seen it, seen it. Movies you know. like well, the, the Descent. Oh, go ahead, Chop Top. Well, I was going to say along the line of Jaws, like a kind of funny story. I was a little whipper when I first saw it. And uh, I remember I didn't go on the beach for like two years straight. <laughs> and every time I took a bath or a shower, I'm looking at the drain saying, Jaws is going to come out and hit me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, still totally stupid, but it had that much of an impact. That Dude, we go, we go, uh, either it was on tour, even on tour, I was already in trouble. We say we were playing a town that, uh, you know, by the ocean, like, and dude, mm -hmm. I was in the swimming pool. I didn't go in the ocean. <laughs> right on. Fuck man. that, man. <laughs> you know, start thinking about Jaws, stuff, right? I get freaked yeah. out in the swimming pool sometimes, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially at it's, night. <laughs> it's, it's that something you can't see. It's under the body of water. Exactly. You, eat, you know, there's something in there that can eat you. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's um, that music, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it builds yeah. and, you, and you know what's coming and that's that was what was so effective about that soundtrack yeah. it prepared you right. for the scary shit and you then know? sometimes they did it and nothing happened you're like oh my god you know <laughs> mm -hmm. right Psych. right yeah <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's like you know i i always grew up watching you know like the universal stuff dracula frankenstein creature from the black lagoon you know and then hammer films with you know peter cushing christopher lee as the mummy i mean that mummy still creeps the shit out of me you know it just, it just at goes. least they have i don't know if they had it in Cle out cleveland but creature features mm -hmm. was a, on saturday nights like 10 30 they played all the old ones dracula yeah. frankenstein from the 30s and stuff right. so that was all cool one of my favorite dracula movies is the one with uh gary oldman in it oh yeah know? bram soaker's dracula yeah 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 right yeah so it's, and it's what, what's beautiful. funny is what's funny sometimes is people ask me if we got the name the skull from that the trouble album i'm like no it's from that 1965 movie with peter cushing the skull the skull and, uh, yeah nice okay. yeah that's where we got it nice. <laughs> cool. which is the trailer oh, yeah. is awesome i keep telling ron i want to i want to play that on the screen behind us when there is that of the, the trailer the skull. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> face. Yeah. And actually, we just, I, I, it was me who, we printed a long sleeve t shirt with the little skull logo here, but on the back is a picture of the, from the movie poster. And I love it. You know? Nice, man. Hell yeah. So, which you can cool. get on our website. Yeah. Yeah. Ericwagnermusic.com. Okay. Eric there you <laughs> That's go. That's right. We'll let you do all the plugs you want, man. Uh, <laughs> when, uh, if, just another skull movie that if you want to watch something on the opposite end, that's really horrible. It's called The Screaming Skull. And they, uh, so that's a really awful bad movie where they usually they take a little skull and they kind of throw it on the ground and it rolls. You know, that's how it travels. <laughs> it's called the, the Screaming Skull, man. It is, it is, it is horrible. So, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh man! So um, me usually movies, 
you know, I know a lot of people, even my girlfriend's like, I ain't watching that. And I'm like, well, all the movie, I don't care what it is. And I'm a sap too for <laughs> certain movies. We were on an airplane coming back from Europe and I was watching my sister's keeper on there. And there's an older lady was sitting next to me. All of a sudden I feel her hand on my leg like and I look over and she's like, Are you okay, honey? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, uh. <laughs> so all it has to do is be good to me. I don't uh -huh. care what it's about really. Right. So right. Cool. Well you know, I made a couple really low no budget schlocky comedy horror movies. I maybe I can send them to you. You could tell me how shitty they are or how good they are. <laughs> well you already know what you need me to tell you for. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're fantastic. You know, they're yeah. the best movies I've ever made. You know, so brilliant director, <laughs> best movies director. you ever made. Yeah. That's uh, right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. You know, with a name like Quest for Uranus, or it's got to be you good. Just want, or you just want validation that it sucks. Or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. a blurb on the back. This movie sucks ass. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Oh man. Uh. <laughs> Guys, do you have any more questions? I don't want to keep Eric up with us all, oh all night. Gosh. He's like, he's probably got real things to do, preparing <laughs> for a tour. Yeah, right. Well, like, recording right an now, album. Right now, I'm done. I think tomorrow, um, we're finish, finishing touches on my solo record. Nice. Tomorrow, nice. mix mix wise before it goes to mastering. And one of my favorite things about doing this record, and I was working on this for about four years because of the skull in and out of the skull tour and all that. But one of my favorite things about this record is the people playing on it are everyone who's playing on it has played on an album that I've been involved in. So it's a, the, the drummer's constant and some of the guitar work is constant, but everybody else, bass, there's a bass player. I have the bass player from Lid. Ron does a couple. Sean McAllister, I brought him out of, like, out of his uh, cave to do one. <laughs> uh, and then Matt Cross, the dude on the second Black Finger. So that's cool. I got people doing solos the, from Black Finger, from the Skull. Victor Griffin did one for me. You know, so it's wow. kind of, it's really cool. I mean, I had to have the same drummer. He was in trouble, too. So there's a couple tunes, like, there's all trouble guys on it that were in that band, four, four of us, and a couple of different ones, actually. The one with Sean and the one with Ron, and there's one with the Blackfinger guys, and there's one with Lid. So it's kind of cool, but it sounds like one record. So it was not easy doing it, I'll tell you that. Uh, people, a lot of times, they want to do stuff the way they think they should do it, but no. You know, it's your vision, right? <laughs> right. This is your solo record, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but it was yeah. a lot of fun, and I mean, like I said, it was it was kind of an all the family thing. Even the dude that I'm recording at, I did the first black thing and recorded a bunch of shit here and did demos and stuff. So everybody involved in this record has been a part of my career, like, and I think it was great. So, that's awesome. we, and, any idea when that's going to be? You're we're finishing it this week, but any idea when when we're going to be able to get access to it, or when when we can buy it, or anything like that? Um, it all depends because of this bullshit going on. The vinyl pressing plants are really behind, so I'm going to be handing this in. Well, it's going to be done mastering. I'm still ironing off the contract. So whatever the contract is done, I, I'm going to give it to them. So okay. I was hoping for fall, but I don't know. You know, I mean, it doesn't make no sense whatsoever for somebody like me to release an album, you know, mid-November, December, January, it's stupid, February, even like. So if it doesn't come out in October, it'll be spring. So okay. mm -hmm. and same okay. with the skull. As soon as we're done with this tour, there's about five songs finished right now. Um, as soon as we're done with this little tour, we're going to just, that's it. And we're going to take our time and finish the record and record it and come out with that one. So that's great. There's Thanks, no, man. there's no title for that yet or anything. The solo album's called in the lonely light of morning. Oh, okay. So, cool. Great. Pretty cool. Thanks. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I can't um, wait for the time. I can't wait for the time when I can sit back and listen to it and not work on it too you know? <laughs> yeah so yeah. it's coming it's close it's really it's different close, so. yeah anything creative it, it, yeah that's cool um because we want to come see you and we'll we'll keep i mean keep in touch through your through your website and through this uh, stuff on facebook about 
about being on tour um, when you're yeah. coming to Cleveland because no, seriously, mm-hmm. we'd love to come and see you and just to say hi and, and press the flesh and say, here, remember us from well, the, you know, maybe we're not. Definitely, we're definitely doing it because the candle mask, they're doing three shows and we're on two of them. The one in Tennessee or Texas or whatever is a festival, but we're doing the Boston and the Chicago show. So mm-hmm. we're going to play our way to Boston and back. So Cleveland is definitely on the list. Okay, great. Right, yeah, yeah. Great well, we'll be cool. in touch to find out because we definitely want to see you. And uh, I was serious about smoking some pot with you. So that's cool. <laughs> you know. Hey, man. Hey, we'll if bring you, it. You know. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. Like, and if you feel like if you need to get rid of something because you got too much, you can do that too. You know? <laughs> yeah, we're happy to share. You know. Um, okay. You like edibles or you like the smoking? I love edibles too, man. All it right. depends what you're doing. I sometimes I'll do like maybe five milligrams sativa in the morning of an edible because I don't get high on it. It's just I'm in a, everything's okay. Sure. I'm in a good mood. How's it going? I'm cleaning the doing the dishes and shit. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I don't catch the buzz good anymore. I was just out in New Mexico and I bought a vape from the dispensary. It was a hybrid called Green Crack. And I'll tell you what, I got high on that one. It was pretty good. <laughs> Is that part of your creative process? Do you, you know, do a few edibles? because I was up in the mountains. Oh, fuck yeah. No, yeah. not the edibles so much. That's kind of newer because of gotcha, dispensaries, yeah. you know. But, yeah, yeah. oh, weed? Fuck yeah. I get up in the morning. Yeah. My brain is empty. I like kind of check my messages, read the sports page or whatever, get my coffee and my one hitter. And okay. that's and get my book out of the music, and that's when I start working. Nice. Been Beautiful. doing that forever. Beautiful. And in the studio, too. Yeah. The lights come down, the candles come on. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I forgot my weed. I'll be right back. <laughs> you know? <laughs> See, this is part of the process you didn't tell us about when I asked. Right. Well, yeah. it, it, that's it, what it, I was looking for. Me, he forgot. Yeah, <laughs> it helps me focus in on yeah. what I'm doing and what I'm saying instead of the world. The world. Like there's a lot of crap going around. It's, yeah. a, nice, it's a noisy world out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, I've been doing that like that forever. Mm-hmm. Drug, any kind of drugs, and I've done them, so I can't say much. Mm-hmm. Drugs in the studio don't go. And even though I used to do it too, you come into a stu- in where I'm working in my studio, and you're doing coke in there, you're out of the studio right then and there. I ain't doing it. So for, I don't know why alcohol too. Like you know, Ron, he likes to have a couple of drinks but he doesn't smoke weed and a couple of drinks he knows how to do a couple mm-hmm. i don't you know <laughs> it's like i'm a, i'm not an alcoholic i'm a binge drinker so i can go like a month without having one and then all of a sudden it's like okay it's time to go off man <laughs> and trouble was notorious in those days the press knew do not go see them on the first show of the tour. <laughs> <laughs> they just let them out, man. They let them out. And <laughs> go, on t- go on day two when they got their hangovers and everything's cool. Like, you know. That's good advice. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully yeah, Cleveland won't like be the first either. show of the tour. Yeah. Uh, it's not really. Yeah. You know, you'll be good. It's, it's okay. not really like that anymore. I'm, right. I'm getting too old for that crap. And, you know, I'm I'm 62 years old. If I go to these gigs now that we're playing, it's all drunk on my ass on stage. Are the people who came to see us going to be there next time we play? Right. No. Yeah. So that's where right. it is back then when we were kids. Who cares, man? Are you? <laughs> you know? <laughs> right oh, man. So, I got, it's a privilege that I still get to do this, you know, and if yeah. I want to end it, that's all I got to do is go on a stage to be, and be a dumb shit, you know, that'll oh. end it real quick. So. Sure. Sure. Great. Oh, man. That's well, great. Listen, uh, Eric, we have had such a good time. Um, cool. Thank you again for being patient with all the technical, you know, technical problems. Thank and, you and, so and much. And thank you for I, just I spending it. time with us. We really, we're, we're fans and just to be able to have this, intimacy with you is is still i mean we'll be like fuck you what, what did we just do you know it's still crazy for us so thank you uh-huh. very much well thank, thank you. you very much kind sirs it was most enjoyable oh good yeah, so, anything oh, you want to plug before we cut you yeah, loose we got I think i did you did the yeah. record of the skull eric wagner music.com that's right there, that's oh yeah right. don't forget to buy yeah. a t-shirt either sure that yeah. helps like okay that buys that buys me like uh i don't know a couple of joints when I'm writing. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> you 
know, people, that pisses me off. I go, we go into town and they're like, hey, man, when are you going to make a new record? Um, yeah, I, I belong to the Spotify thing where I download shit for free. Fuck you, man. <laughs> it takes me a year to do a record. I'm starving and you're going to get it for free? Right. Wow. Yeah, because so, you don't make, I, I mean, the Spotify, those artists don't make anything, like a, like a tenth of a penny or something for download. It's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. Oh, you know, yeah. free shit. Come on, man. I spent my, I made, I took my time to make this record. Like, I'm not getting paid, mm-hmm. you right. know. And your prices you can, on your website are crazy great. You know, 12 bucks, 8 bucks, 10 bucks. Like, Jesus, that's a fucking great price for the music, yeah. you know. So, yeah. I mean, why not? Hey, we oh, get a shirt, well. you get a couple of doobies, and you write better music, and then we get better music to hear. So it's a great symbiotic relationship. Exactly. You know, it's a, the circle of life. <laughs> the, do- very, the doobies, very important. I guess. <laughs> right. Good. Okay. Oh, we know. Me, and, me and weed are soulmates. <laughs> <laughs> me, and, me and alcohol, we get along, but a lot of sometimes it doesn't end well. You know, yeah. we, we, we're arguing with each other a little bit. <laughs> a little abusive. Stuff. Well, it's kind of like two two martinis. I'm perfectly charming. By the third one, I start to snarl a little bit, and by the fourth <laughs> one, maybe it's time to take me back to the hotel or something. You know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, cool. so I I try to be cool. You know? Yeah. Nice. Anyway, well, well thank, thank you guys very much. It was a blast. Oh, next, we had a great time. time it was fantastic. Through, well, next time we go through Cleveland, come up and say hey and we'll have a beer or whatever all right yeah that'd that be great be awesome. brother. And, uh, thank you so much and uh so we're just gonna we're just gonna sign out and this you've been listening to montag master of illusion Chop, but huh? it's sad but it's sunday that's right <laughs> montag <laughs> on a, sunday, you listen to monday on a sunday <laughs> And the Slutmeister. <laughs> Slutmeister. But, yeah. As as I, that, you're just a slut now. As soon as I say, the fucking slut. Man. Derek Wagner has changed your name, buddy. That's right. You're a slut. I'll take it. I'll take it. You're a slut. Derek, Derek Wagner, I will accept Slutmeister. Oh, you. fuck, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, Thanks so much, Eric. Oh, you've been and, listening and to... Chris the Slut. <laughs> Oh, this has been great. You've been listening to Heavy Metal. 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 All right.